topic benchmarking and quality improvement projects in the NICU. I have nothing to disclose. And for those who doesn't know Latifa Hospital, we are uh, based in Dubai with 64 beds, level three and four. Uh, and the most important thing in our unit is the teamwork. This is some of the references. I'm going to speak uh, quickly about quality improvement projects and give an example, uh, some examples how it can be uh, very uh, useful in your uh, units. So uh, looking at the burden of the prematurity worldwide, we have almost 15 million babies every, ba every year premature they are born and 1.1 of them, they die per year. And when they uh, look at the causes of these uh, problems, uh, the preterm complications 35% and intrapartum related 24%. So already we have a huge problem related to the prematurity and definitely it needs proper uh, attendance. Safety in the NICU, when we speak safety about in an ICU, we want to eradicate medical errors. And when we say medical errors, it is failure of planned action to be completed as intended for the or the use of wrong plan to achieve an aim. On average, there is one in 10 patients. And if you look at the prematures, you will find that the very low birth weight, they have almost 57% versus only 3% in the hospitalized, hospitalized term infants. So we have huge number of preterm, and on top of this, we don't want to add a problem to them uh, related to faults, which we make it ourselves. So uh, usually we have errors, we have near miss, we will not go on this, but this is related to this. In order to avoid any problem which happened when an error happened, or it result in a death of a baby, for instance, it become a sentinel, sent, sentinel event, then you do a plan or you do a quality improvement project to solve the problem. So common reports of adverse ev events in the NICU, you can see uh, infection, uh, catheter infiltrate, uh, extubation, intracranial hemorrhage ischemia, all these can happen. And out of these things, 10% resulted in death and 23% resulted in permanent harm and mental disability. So that's why it's very important to look at the patient safety. And the other thing which we want to look at is the quality improvement. Quality improvement is the combined and unceasing efforts for, of everyone to make changes that will lead to better patient outcome, better patient a better system in, in the unit and better professional development. And patient safety is avoidance and prevention of unintended or unexpected harm to people during. Both they are uh, interlinked and they walk hand in hand. Now, how do we know if we are providing a quality service in our unit? Usually we look at the reports, the feedback of the patients, the complaint, adverse events, uh, patient outcomes, audit targets, all these things, it gives us an idea. If something wrong happened in the unit, if a baby, uh, a big infiltrate happened uh, and uh, his, re his leg be become indurated, then this is an event which happened. Most important, make it a habit not to blame in the first time, even in the second time, but you have to use it as to find a solution for this. And how do you find solution? Actually, these things, the outcome of these things is always a trigger for a quality improvement project. And quality improvement project, there is a lot of models which you can utilize it to do a quality improvement project. They are almost all the same. No one is superior to another. Some differences are there. Just out of the knowledge, these are all quality improvement uh, tools which you can use it uh, in conducting a quality improvement project. And the most, uh, in our hospital, we use the Focus PDCA. Uh, and we will know what is, is uh, what is Focus PDCA. So quality improvement projects, actually it builds a bridge between the scientific approaches, theory and knowledge, and delivery of a safe medical and uh, medical care preventing adverse events, preventing uh, errors, and this will make the uh, practice better and it will improve the practice and it can be applied on everything in the unit from the patient care, 
uh, to a clinical guidelines, everything related to the neonatal unit, you want to improve it, you want to put solution, it can be used as we will see in a while. <laughs> now, the other thing which we uh, uh, just mentioned, the benchmarking. When we say benchmarking, you are doing uh, treating your patients and you are calculating what's the uh, outcome of these patients. There is uh, how many infections, how many intracranial uh, uh, hemorrhage, whatever. So you want to compare this to another, a process of comparing performance data with peer organizations in order to identify areas of improvement and track progress over time. If I see that the percentage of uh, IVH in my unit is 10%, how I will know that this is normal or not normal? I have to benchmark it to another place to know what is the uh, uh, proper level. Now, this benchmarking can be internal or external. When we say internal, you are benching it to yourself, to your previous reports. When you are doing external, there is many uh, places where you can use the uh, approach them. The most famous one is the Vermont Oxford Network. Vermont Oxford, we bench our results with the Vermont Oxford Network. It's supposed to be a non profit uh, organization having more than 1,200 uh, neonatal intensive care units uh, linked to it, uh, uh, covering all levels one and two and three and four. And when you uh, uh, register with them, uh, usually you register to the level of your unit. If you are level three, you will put level three, level four, level four, and you will be benching uh, your results to a pool of neonatal intens intensive care uh, units worldwide. So uh, uh, the hospital, it is a hospital numeric comparison of the key performance measures indicators in an ICU. These are the things which we benchmark and they are offered. So this is usually, this is actually is all the morbidities and mortalities which happened in any neonatal intensive care unit. So when we started in two, uh, 2007, for instance, we found that uh, ROP was relatively high. We'll see what we did. We uh, infection. So it give you in a big. Uh, pool of uh, units, what is the uh, uh, outcome and what is the, uh, you can say, proper level of uh, infection, of IVH, of uh, bronchopulmonary dysplasia. So you can decide you need to improve, you need to do any more actions in your unit uh, to improve the service. So as we said, do a hospital numeric comparison and uh, keep of your key performance measures. Now, when we key, say key performance measures, usually, let's say this is the beginning of the year. I have, for instance, infection in my uh, unit. I found that uh, a big number of infection is coming. So I want to use this infection as a key performance measure to uh, measure to 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 improve it. I have to make something called a smart change, which means what? I have specifically to mention, I want to measure infection of fungal infections, for instance. I have to use, uh, to assess something which is measurable. I will not choose to something which you cannot measure it. You can see that there is one, two, three, 10%, 50% of infection. This is a measurable thing. Uh, it, it is achievable, it's realistic, and it's timely, you put it, uh, in, in a time frame that uh, I'm going to do this project from day one in the year until day uh, one in December. I have one year. During this this period, I'm going to do what we were saying, the quality improvement project uh, uh, based on the benchmarking, which I found that my result is worse than the infection, which is on the network. So I want to improve it to come down to this level, to become, for instance, I am 10% to become 5%, we will see now. So one of the tools which we use in this when we decide to do a quality improvement project is what's called a cause-effect diagram, fish pond diagram. Usually this uh, presentation, quality improvement projects, we do a workshop one day uh, because it has so many things in it, but I'm giving you just a glimpse. One of the things which is important is this cause-effect diagram in which you put the diagram 
What is the effect you want to do it? You want to decrease the rate of infection. You will look at the causes in the methods which you are using in, in the people which they are involved, uh, the equipment you are using, the environment which you will analyze all these things, why, why, why infection can happen, put the answers, this is the cause, and in the end, it is the effect. Why we need this? Because I want to do what's called the focus PDCA, a quality performance improvement model. When I decide to do a focus PDCA, this is the idea. Find a process to improve. I want to improve the infection. Organize a team that knows the process. So I'm choosing doctors, nurses, uh, lab technician, everybody involved in the unit in this. Clarify current knowledge of the process and understand the causes of the process variation. Now here, this is why we use the fishbone and we will see one example of the cases. Then select the process of the improvement, what you want to do. After, th this is the focus. The BDCA, I analyzed, I prepared the team, I knew the problem, what is it? Now I want to plan what I'm going to do and how to implement this and what data I'm going to collect. So this is the planning. Then do, start doing the improvement by, plan by implementing the plans which you have put. Uh, collect the data, uh, do data analysis. Then after that, check data for the process if there is improvement or not. You don't do it in the beginning of the year and you come and look at it at the end of the year. No, it is a continuous process as you will see. If, you are if there is improvement, continue on this process. Uh, if there is not, make the adjustment. And that's why we say Repeat the focus BDCA again and again and again. You can do more than 10 cycles per uh, year in order to reach the target which you want. So if you will look at the example, this this example about antibiotic usage in, the, in our NICU, okay? We followed the same process, focus BDCA. We planned, we sit together, okay? What was the problem? Why we decided to do this? Because in, in May 2019, anti, uh, 2019, antibiotic usage guidelines in ICU was changed from, and the empirical antibiotic administration decreased to 48 hours from 72 hours. So originally we are giving for three days, now we changed it to 48 hours. Then in June, we changed it to uh, 36 hours instead of continuing for 48 hours. Why we want this change to decrease the multidrug resistant organisms. We want to decrease the length of the stay of the newborns in the unit and decrease the financial burden for patient and for the hospital because this antibiotic which you are using, it costs money. So we did the same thing. We made a team, everybody discussed. Uh, we did the focus BDCA, the first part, and then we found several factors are involved in the cause and the effect multidrug resistant organism, excessive use of broad spectrum antibiotics, poor hand hygiene, etc. How did we know this? This is from the fishbone. We looked at the education, inappropriate use of antibiotic, lack of antibiotic usage monitoring tool, uh, uh, new uh, they have prolonged uh, stay in the NICU, invasive procedures many, poor hand hygiene. We analyzed everything in this uh, unit related to uh, antibiotic usage so that it can give us what are the contributing causes to this high usage of uh, multidrug of antibiotics. And what was the result when we started? So of course, this is the target. The target we want to be 85, uh, 90, 90, and then later on we decrease to 70. So when we started, this is the percentage of neonate compiling with the NICU antibiotic usage guidelines that is stopping 72 hours. As you can see, we were uh, better than the, the target. It was, we are supposed to be maximum 85, no, 96.5, 96.5, we are stopping at 72 hours. When we saw like this, and later on we changed to 48 hours, again, it was the same. Then at 36 hours, it was, so we decreased the target uh, to from 90 to 70%. Uh, always, if you are improving, you will make it more and more difficult to you. And 
uh, what was the result of all this? This is the rate of the compliance to the antibiotic usage guideline, the education, the awareness of all, if everybody. This is the average length of stay in the NICU. It has decreased from 21.6 to 14.2 days. And this is the uh, uh, effect on the cost, cost of consumption uh, value. It decreased from 658,000 to 139. Uh, and by the way, this, we calculate that we take into consideration the number of the patients. Our unit is most of the, all the time actually, more than 100% uh, bed occupancy, uh, uh, 64 bed. So in spite of this, we managed to decrease the cost of the uh, antibiotics. So you did well with this quality uh, improvement project and you will keep continuing and repeating this and assessing your data. Another example is decreasing ROP in the new NEET. When we ch joined the uh, uh, Vermont, we followed the same things. The focus PDCA, find the process, organize a team, uh, clarify current knowledge, understand the cause, and then select the process, and then plan, uh, do, check, and act. So when we started, this is the, the when we started, it was Al Wasl in 2007, when we joined the Fairmont Oxford Network. You can see we were 50.50% uh, any ROP, while the level in the Vermont Oxford Network was 35.6. In the year after that, when we started the quality improvement project, it has decreased to 33. And then in 2009, we have come down to 28%. This is all, all ROP I'm speaking. Severe ROP, we reached one, while in Vermont it's 7.6. This is in 2009. So, and all the same, we achieved our target by the quality improvement project, which we did. If we look in, tooth in 2021, uh, 2022, I will get the results very soon, usually in April. So that's why I put 2021. Uh, uh, Total ROP, which in in uh, in our statistics is 4.9 percent, only 3.9 percent they needed intervention. While in Vermont it is 6 percent. So you can see there is a good achievement of the target. You uh, you saved your patient. You provided a, a quality care because in the end, when these babies comes to you, it is is a man. You are responsible to give the best thing and to prevent any harm to these babies. This is one of the things which we utilize, for instance, uh, uh, in reducing. I mean, we put a sticker on the uh, incubator and parents will uh, even alarm the, the nurse that uh, the oxygen is decreasing, it, it decrease the oxygen. The last example is management of hypoglycemia in the first 48 hours. We noticed that there is an average admission to our NICU, 24.2% of babies are admitted only with neonatal hypoglycemia, which is not logic. There is something, definitely there is something wrong. So uh, uh, when we analyzed at, at that time, it was mainly because of the BH, BFHI and the cancellation of the rooming, uh, or implementation of rooming in. Uh, so this has increased dramatically the, incre the number of uh, hypoglycemia in our unit. Uh, it in it incre and there was, by the way, no clear guidelines, even internationally, for the uh, neonatal hypoglycemia up to 2011. Uh, the first international established in, in 2011. So anyway, we did the same uh, thing, the focus VDCA. Uh, we involved everybody, the nurses, the doctors, the uh, lab team, uh, the parents, and we followed the same st step, focus, find the problem, organize, discuss, read, find all these things. And uh, the 
target is to decrease admissions to the NICU uh, in the first 48, 48 hours. We did the guidelines. We uh, This is the inclusion criteria. We, we too much insulin, the big babies, the infant of diabetic mother or LGA, too few uh, reserves, the small babies late preterm or term SGA, and maternal drug effects. And the exclusion criteria, those less than 34 weeks or multiple congenital anomalies. And we developed this guideline in which every step is mentioned. The nurse, she will take the action even without the calling the doctor. It's mentioned when to call the doctor after the first time or the second time. And what was the result? You can see, we started with 24%. We implemented here the guideline. The admission came down to 11.5%. Uh, Again, it was 12 point. The benchmark uh, we uh, implemented here, uh, this is the first article which was mentioning what is the expected uh, uh, rate of admission because of neonatal hypoglycemia, and yet we were always below the benchmark. And uh, of course, you have to repeat the cycle. So I decreased the uh, admission from 24.2% to 4%. So these uh, quick three examples, we have more than uh, 30 KPI in the unit. All of them, they have, or most of them, they have, they are part of a quality improvement project. Not necessarily always for improvement, but again for monitoring, because as we said, we are uh, comparing our data with the benchmark. So I want to make sure that the results and the outcome is uh, proper. This is one of the article which we published and uh, regarding the uh, quality improvement uh, improvement initiatives in United Intensive Care Unit uh, for improved care outcomes, a review of evidence. And all these things, definitely there is, uh, you will find th that there is evidence that uh, doing quality improvement projects is definitely helpful in any unit. Now, the last slide, neonatal care is usually an extremely data intensive activity. In 2017, I came with this project, Shabak Dubai Al Dubai Neonatal Network. Uh, the idea that it collects data from all NICU in Dubai, this data will do the same principle of Vermont Oxford Network, even better. It is designed with uh, ICD 10 uh, coding, all drop minor, uh, highest level of information security. Uh, and uh, it was launched, or and it's now available on the net in uh, Dubai Academic Healthcare Corporation uh, from 2018. Password, uh, we even tested on 20 units in Dubai at that time when I started the project. Uh, 20 units in Dubai, and it gives you the data in the same way, uh, like Vermont comparison with rates and everything. Uh, and I was following all these years in order to when it will become effective, when it will join the practice. Uh, the last uh, feedback was that uh, we did in Dubai something called NABID, which co connects all the units of neonatal intensive care units in Dubai together. I can, or the hospitals, uh, if there is a mother admitted uh, in uh, X hospital and the, she comes to us, I can go to that file and see. So it's a, a system for connection of the hospital. They said, once we finish this, uh, it will be implemented and they're expecting within one or two months. So hopefully it will come, then this will be an excellent opportunity. So take home message, new needs get admitted with their own problems. Please let us not add morbidity to the sick new needs. Monitoring and improving outcome by quality improvement projects and benchmarking should be an ongoing process and not just one time. An essential, it is an essential process in the NICU for, as I mentioned in the beginning, better patient safety, better outcome, better performance, and you can use the focus PDCA. It is a very simple process. And finally, regular benchmarking 
can help you track the progress and identify a new best practices like you saw, we did the uh, hypoglycemia guidelines because of this. Thank you.